All right, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Monday night, 9.51 p.m. here, California time. Losing my voice here a little bit. On November 4th, 2024, latest activity shows a 4.6 out here across the area of, uh, looks like, China area. Over here across this area, maybe uh, even into eastern Afghanistan. We'll see what the USGS has to say about that. But uh, latest activity uh, across the West Coast. Let's go ahead and check in here across California, see what's going on. Um, some very small microquake activity across the area of the Cascades for now. Uh, let's check out tremor activity real quick. I would double check that here and see what we have. Uh, 188 epicenters of tremor along the Cascadia subduction zone, mainly here across the southern coast here of Oregon. Now, tremor activity is not earthquake activity, but uh, tremor vibrational frequencies that occur down, dip, downstream here of the Cascadia subduction zone into the deeper areas of the region. So, as always, increasing potential there for some earthquake activity there across the Cascadia. Uh, we seen a 3.2 out there earlier this morning at the extreme southern end of the Cascadia, about 10, kilom or 10 miles deep here. Uh, right smack dab on the Cascadia mega thrust area, as you can see there on the map. So continuing to watch that. Who knows when that big earthquake is going to happen out here, but we always got to be on guard. Uh, the Bay Area, fairly quiet. A little bit of um, uh, clustering going on here across the, the um, Pinnacles area of the San Andreas Fault. Mostly smaller microquakes out there. Nothing big to report out there for now. And this uh, uptick that we've seen in earthquake activity earlier today around the Borrego Springs area, the San Jacinto Fault Zone, has uh, pretty much uh, died off for the most part. Only a handful of smaller microquakes out there in the area today uh, following that event. Uh, but, uh, you know, as always, you know, a little bit of uptick here, a little day or two of quietness, and then some further escalation that takes place out here across California. Uh, so we'll continue to watch that, right? Got a big day going on tomorrow, Election Day, November 5th. Seems like a lot of large events happen out there on big time dates, such as the Election Day. We'll see what happens for tomorrow. Uh, not a whole lot going on there through Yellowstone National Park. That's wind events going on out there. Uh, that darker blue line across all of the seismograph stations throughout the day today and early evening. So nothing major going on there for earthquake activity, just uh, some environmental outside noise. Uh, Texas and the rest of the country out here, as you can see, fairly quiet. So what's been going on here since uh, this morning's update? Well, let's take a look at the newer activity here. Got some shallow earthquake activity across the uh, Tonga Trench there. Five pointer coming in upstream following that deep earthquake activity. New Zealand, quite a few three stern up there. Nothing major going on. Uh, typical clustering going on out there across the crunch zone, the typical plate tectonic crunch zone, but uh, I mean, nothing of abnormal activity. Five pointer here across the Ecuador area, it looks like. Uh, well, excuse me, Colombia, a little bit further up north here along the plate boundary. 24 miles deep here for that five pointer into the Colombian Trench. Not a deep earth, uh, not a super deep earthquake, but uh, stirring things up out there a little bit, it looks like. Uh, throughout the last week, we've seen a handful of earthquakes down south here across, across the Ecuador area. Uh, some twos and threes. Surprising that the USGS is reporting that earthquake activity. All right. Puerto Rico Trench, uh, really nothing major going on there. A couple twos and threes there across the southwestern edge of the Puerto Rico area. Let's see what else we got here across the worldwide movement. Uh, nothing, I can say, nothing major going on out here, folks. I'm going to try and keep this a little on the short side because my voice is cracking more than, uh, I, I don't even know what to compare it to. So <coughs> we got to keep moving along, right? Um, where's our space weather? I thought I clicked on it. There we go. Having some weird events happening out here to me today. Um, I don't know if you guys seen that article I posted earlier, but we've seen more sunspots out here on the southern hemisphere of the sun, this solar cycle, uh, and the Space Weather Prediction Center 
is forecasting that we'll see a amplification of northern hemisphere sunspots here uh, as we continue through the solar maximum. Most of the sunspots out here south of the equator of the sun uh, that should amplify here across the northern segment uh, as we uh, continue about on our journey around the sun. Uh, elevated flare threat remains at about 35% chance and uh, that is due primarily due to a number of sunspots out here on the eastern quadrant of the sun, specifically this area right here. A lot of intermixing of the polarity is in that sunspot, but uh, can't leave out this area back here as well. Um, this whole region needs to be watched here for some stronger flaring. Uh, separation of the core right here, not really too concerning. Uh, and the same for these other sunspots up there across the uh, uh, portion of the northern hemisphere of the sun. So uh, we'll watch this area that's uh, capable of producing some X flares out here. Uh, no major roars in the forecast here. Uh, maybe a potential G1 class storm, but uh, you know this could pop off at any given day just to, just due to normal solar wind out here. So we're not really calling for anything major in terms of the uh, uh, roar activity. S storm Prediction Center here, folks. Dealing with a little noise out there tonight across the area of Oklahoma, venturing into Arkansas and Missouri, down into Texas as well. Uh, stay safe out there because we do have a 10% chance of tornado activity throughout the evening and a 5 and 2% as well. So it's a fairly narrow line here of severe weather, but that's uh, a little scary, right? Nighttime tornadoes, not good. Some wind in there as well. Uh, for the day tomorrow, that severe weather shifts much further east. You know, but tonight we, we got to deal with the severe weather potential out there. Let's see what we got here for the windy model. Uh, see what's going on here. Um, weather radar, as you can see, there's that line of thunderstorms out there. Goodness, all the way from, wow, look at this, almost to the border near Laredo, Texas, stretching all the way up here, all the way up to the Great Lakes area. Look at that. That is a huge line of thunderstorms out there. Goodness. I mean, that's, that may be common out there for the folks, but I couldn't even imagine something out here where I live in California. We get these little thunderstorms that are probably only about uh, a mile or two miles wide. So, it, it, yeah, that is um, that is a storm line out there for sure. So a lot of folks uh, being prepared, right, hopefully, for the severe weather potential overnight. 10 o'clock, 11, 12. It's 12 o'clock out there right now across this area. Uh, just stay safe out there, folks. I mean, there's been some tornado activity out here, and uh, that threat will continue through the evening. So please be on guard. It's a work week, right? A lot of folks going to bed early, getting the kids up early for school uh, in the morning. Just, you know, keep your weather radio on. That's a pretty big deal. Uh, keep your weather, severe weather radio on. As um, far as the numerical model goes, let's see what we have. There's that line of severe weather right now on the GFS model. We put this into motion here. Uh, notice a little tropical system down here in the Gulf of Mexico. Not a big deal, but uh, could bring some further amplification here of the severe weather as we head into the weekend time period. Uh, hitting the same regions here, Oklahoma, uh, Arkansas area. The south going to get quite a bit of rainfall as well from that tropical system. California looks like we got a decent storm system set up here for uh, um, November. I'll take it. Uh, some rain and much needed snow coming into the area. Uh, aside from that, uh, what you see is what you get out here. I mean, there's a, you know, typical weather patterns out here for the winter time. And I think the tropical threat obviously will go away, but for now we got this one tropical system here uh, that could bring a little bit of trouble out here for the Gulf Coast states. Uh, for that, though, folks, I am out of here. Um, we'll catch you guys back out here tomorrow, right? Pretty important date. Tomorrow, Tuesday, November 5th, we've got the elections here in the States. Uh, it doesn't matter who you're voting for. Just make your voice heard. Pretty important here on both sides. I do not like to discuss politics out here, but it's very important that we get out there and vote as a country and as a... Uh, you know, as our future, we need to make sure we uh, uh, secure our democracy out here.
All right, I'm out of here, folks. Have a good day. Well, good night, that is. I'm just, I'm still out of it. Uh, I'm starting to sound a little bit like Alex Jones out here. It's just, <clears throat> I can't kick it. It's not going away. I don't know what to do. It feels like I breathe fire into my lungs here. And uh, nothing comes up. I can cough a lung up. But, well, nothing will come up at all. I've tried a lot of different uh, home remedies here. Nothing is helping. So, you know, I, I could probably talk like this a little bit. Might deepen the uh, the scariness of earthquakes and hurricanes. But I, I don't want to talk like that. I want my normal voice back. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm about ready to cough up lung right now. Have a good night, folks. We'll catch you guys out here a little bit later. Stay safe, please.